Hi, I'm Chris from codereviewvideos.com and in this video we're going to be taking a slightly more in-depth look at getting data back from the query string and that means rather than being able to get your data from the URL like this, instead it's going to look more like this. And the problem we have now is that these sections, defaults and requirements don't actually work so I'm going to have to get rid of them. But that leaves us with a problem of how we make sure that our data that's coming in is valid. So let's first tidy up our root and ensure that we know what we're talking about here. So I'm just going to do A equals B and C equals D, send that in, nothing's actually happening, we need to inject the request and then we can get things from it. And remember we're using the request query because this is the query string so let's just refresh that we can see we've got our query parameters as an array and then we've just got the contents of the key of A which is B. And because the contents of our query string are now stored as an array we can count how many we've got. And that's the two keys A and C and we can verify this by getting the keys. And you can even do some logic to check if a query parameter exists, which will return a true or a false. And if it's true, then we could do some changes to the array that represents our query string. And these are mutations, which means the underlying data is going to get changed or the original array. And we could dump that off. Let's see where we get with that. And the one to be a bit careful of is replace, which as the name implies, completely replaces everything. Now there's nothing magic going on here. All this is possible because request query is an instance of a parameter bag. So if we do a get class on there, we can see that it's a parameter bag from HTTP foundation. And this class has a bunch of methods that make working with our query parameters more convenient. But the main reason for telling you all this is that there are some methods in here which allow you to put up a first line of defense against bad input. So you can see in here like get alnum, get digits, get int, and what these are going to do is effectively take the values that come in and ensure that they're in a certain format or drop back to a sane default which you can provide. So let's look at how we could use some of these. The first two we're going to cover are get alpha and get alpha num. And get alpha is just going to return any words in our string or any letters, whereas get alpha num is going to be letters and numbers. Again, no magic to any of these. You can click on them and find out exactly what they're up to. They have these funny POSIX regular expressions. And what I can do is just quickly show you where these are coming from. And these are a great way to improve your regular expression understanding as well. So as it stands, we're going to expect to get B for both of these. So if we refresh, and that's because A equals B, so we should expect to get B for both. Whereas if we put some numbers onto here now, so one, two, three after that, then we should only get B for our get alpha, but we'll get B one, two, three for get alpha num. And we could put an underscore in here and it will get stripped out. And that's because it's not an alphanumerical character. Perhaps the more unintuitive option is the default. So I'll just add in a default here. So effectively what I would have expected to happen when I first started using this was that if we didn't match the filter, so if the input that we sent in was not alphanumeric or was not just an alpha value, so like letters value, then it would hit the default. But that's not actually the case as we'll see here. So we'll send that in. We should still expect everything to be good, which it is. But if then we change this to say three underscores, then we're not actually getting the default value and that's because it only defaults back if the key doesn't exist which is a bit I don't know it's a bit confusing definitely to say the least but it didn't function the way that I expected so just be careful of that one. I've added in a further three here get digits get int and get boolean we're going to start with get digits and what this is going to do is pretty much the opposite of get alpha so where get alpha is only going to get letters this is only going to get numbers. Next, get int is just simply going to cast the input to an int. So I'll try that one. We should expect to see one, two, three. Also, there's get boolean. So we'll see what we get from that straight away. We'd expect to see false. But this one works slightly differently. And if we just check why that is, it actually passes it through the filter and it uses this filter validate boolean. Now you can provide your own filters. It's one of the methods on the parameter bag. So if we have a quick look, request, query, 
filter you can actually do this yourself and obviously it's doing it for booleans and you can see the method is here it tells you that you can use all these filters on here and then there's a big list of them which uh, which I won't go into in great detail but what I will tell you about them is pretty much anything that Symphony's already got an assertion for you can do a filter for and for completeness I will just show you that actually this accepts one as true and also the string true as true but anything else will be false and we'll finish up with an example here and we'll say from the request we want to get a value from our query string and that value is going to be an integer value of the key ID and if we don't get an ID then we'll pass through the ID of two for some reason we've got a database with a couple of records in there so that's that's where we're going to pull back these uh, bits of data from and then we'll just create a quick query for this and now knowing what we know if we send this in we should expect to see a record that's not we've not sent in the key so we're getting back the default which is the id2 but if we pass this in now id equals one then we should be getting back our first record and that's all fine just remember though that you do still have to mitigate the fact that someone can send in junk and it's not going to work because something can't convert to an integer the last thing worth pointing out is that Foz Rest Bundle actually already solves this problem for you. It's got the param fetcher and the param fetcher is going to give you a very similar sort of thing to what you had where URLs had placeholders in them so you can apply requirements and defaults. You can do the same thing with your query parameters when you're using Foz Rest Bundle's param fetcher. So I would recommend this as long as you're okay with bringing in Foz Rest Bundle as a dependency to your project then it's absolutely fine. It's This is basically the entire purpose of the query param annotation as in my opinion this implementation is nicer than the one that you're going to end up rolling of your own 